very radical thing to say in UFO research in the late 70s. Again, researchers weren't really considering this as a possibility. But what happened is after that book came out, Stringfield became this conduit for scores of first-hand accounts. People would come to him and say, I'm retired military, or uh, occasionally you get second-hand, like from the spouse of a military person. Um, that would tell him of either having seen dead alien bodies, for example, at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. He got a lot of those, quite a few of those. Uh, or people who talked about first-hand knowledge of retrievals of uh, UFOs that had crashed or come down in some way. In fact, one thing Stringfield uh, collected were uh, four or five accounts from people who claimed to have been taken and shown a movie of an alien autopsy. He had a couple of those. And this is years before the, uh, the infamous Santilli film appeared, of course. So whatever that means. But these stories were circulating for many years, and Re Leonard Stringfield recorded them. Uh, I would point out that I think a number of these leaks were attributable uh, in part to the, the administration of Jimmy Carter. I mean, Jimmy Carter had a, had a campaign in 76, and everyone knows that <clears throat> he had said he had seen a UFO, and uh, a couple of people asked him when he was campaigning what he would do about UFO information. And I really don't think that Carter was uh, as enthusiastic about ending UFO secrecy as some people like to make out today. I don't think so at all. But I do think it's true that, that he raised a lot of expectations with his election. And so that when Stringfield's book came out, which was the first year of the Carter administration, a number of his sources actually came to him and they told him, well, part of it was because we're pretty confident the president's going to make an announcement soon anyway. So I don't feel bad about telling you this. There were many people who thought that Jimmy Carter was, in fact, going to make a, an announcement about UFOs, which he never did, of course. So anyway, that's Stringfield, and he's important. Again, not amounting to proof by itself that there's this program, but something to think about. Then you get statements by people like Barry Goldwater, former senator, uh, I think five-term senator, something like that. Ran for president in 1964. Uh, a general in the Air Force Reserve, co close friend to uh, Curtis LeMay. Goldwater a number of times talked about how he was denied access to the, the so-called Blue Room at Wright-Patterson, where alien bodies were alleged to be held. Goldwater talked about this a number of times in one of these letters that I quote here from 1981. It was his final letter on the subject. He said, this thing has gotten so highly classified even though I will admit there's been a lot of it that's been released, referring to the recent Freedom of Information Act releases that had just occurred, he said, it is still, in, it is just impossible to get anything on it. Goldwater was a serving senator at the time of making that statement. And he was unable to get access to this. What does that say about our political system when our elected officials and people of that stature are unable to get access to this program. It tells you that a silent revolution had already taken place by then. Now, back to Wilbert Smith a little bit. Back in the early 1980s, a Canadian researcher, Arthur Bray, who uh, is still alive, incidentally. There was an internet rumor that Arthur Bray had passed away. Arthur Bray lives. I'm happy to say that's a picture of me with Arthur Bray back in my bearded days. I had that beard for two years. Arthur Bray found a handwritten note by Wilbert Smith. Wilbert Smith, back in 1950, had gone to D.C. and had met with senior American scientists who had told him about this fact that the UFO matter was above top secret, two levels above the H-bomb, high level, very important, and so on. Smith wrote this memo out, and it was in the public domain already. But what wasn't in the public domain were his handwritten notes that Arthur Bray found. <clears throat> the handwritten notes gave the name of Robert Sarbacher, who was the scientist who gave Smith most of this information. Ha so it happened that Sarbacher was still alive at that time. So one thing led to another, and several researchers asked Robert Sarbacher, if I'm not mistaken, I believe Stanton Friedman was one such person, asking him to confirm 
whether in fact he met with Wilbert Smith and talked about UFOs and, and so on. Well, to one researcher, to William Steinman, Sarbacher wrote a two-page, single-spaced, typewritten letter confirming all of it, saying, yes, absolutely, we did talk about it. Talked about being um, privy to meetings where this topic was discussed, um, saying, in fact, that he had gone to one crash, uh, to one site where there had been a crash retrieval. He didn't say he participated in a crash retrieval, but that he had, no, he had analyzed uh, a landing site. That's what he said. Mentioned Vannevar Bush as being definitely involved in the program. Mentioning Robert Oppenheimer. Mentioning someone named Dr. Eric Walker. Eric Walker, well, who's he? Well, I'll mention him in just a minute. One thing Sarbacher mentioned was that the scuttlebutt was that the nature of these aliens was that they were constructed somewhat like insects. Okay. Well, Dr. Eric Walker. Walker was also alive. He had been once the president of Penn State University. He was an important man. Uh, a couple of researchers asked Eric Walker about this. Okay, William Steinman, again, talked to Walker. And uh, Walker said to Steinman, yes, I attended meetings concerning that subject matter. He told him uh, that an organization such as MJ-12 did exist, a control group essentially, to manage this problem. He told Steinman that you're delving into an area that you can do absolutely nothing about. Leave it alone. Okay, so that's Eric Walker. Edgar Mitchell. A lot of people know about Edgar Mitchell, who's Apollo 14. And Edgar Mitchell's never said he's seen a UFO. He's never said that they saw aliens on the moon. But what he has said since 1997 with regularity, I've been tracking these statements of his. He has said that he has very elite sources who have told him point blank of the existence of super secret deep black programs to study alien technology and bodies. He told me this face to face and he has said it publicly. He will not say who those sources are. I asked him most recently a few months ago and he still won't talk. In fact, one thing he said to me in an email was he said, look, I understand where you're going, I, I respect what you're trying to do, but I can't help you, he said, because the people who came to me when they did, did so at great professional and personal risk, and he said, risk to their families. He explicitly said that. So this is a serious matter. We have the statements of Ben Rich. Ben Rich, who uh, for a while ran Lockheed's most elite skunk works division succeeded Kelly Johnson in that regard. Back in a 1986 personal note to John Andrews, an associate of his, Ben Rich, uh, Andrews had written to Rich and said, Ben, I have a lot of respect for you and I just want to know about, you know, we're both interested in the UFO issue. And in fact, a lot of uh, Andrews' letter had itself been prompted by the recent revelations of Robert Sarbacher. And Andrews said, do you think these UFOs are ours or theirs? That is, are they human-made or, or are they alien? Now here's Rich in a personal, in a handwritten little note. He says, yes, I'm a believer in both categories. I feel everything is possible. Now, you can take that to mean, well, he doesn't know that UFOs are real. He believes. Of course, you can also recognize that this is an open letter, a handwritten note, in a very unsecured kind of situation. He doesn't know where this letter is going to end up. He's a seasoned executive. These are not people who just start spouting off, uh, you know, and, and giving up the game that openly. Um, and then what he says is many of our um, um, man-made UFOs are unfunded opportunities. He underlined the U, the F, and the O. Now, what, what does that mean? Well, I, I see it in two, two possibilities. One is as a freebie. In other words, a, a, retrie a crash retrieval. You get this little gift, and you try to figure out how it works. Or it could certainly be referring to deep black covert money, and very likely both. Um, I'm inclined to think the first. I'm inclined to think that it refers to freebies. An opportunity, an unfunded opportunity, yeah. Crash retrieval my interpretation. Uh, 